transforms are a particular way to manipulate differential equations and uh, they're especially useful for control systems and uh, particularly for evaluate, evaluating the performance of systems when you use feedback. They're also useful for solving differential equations although we already have many methods to do that often uh, without needing very many calculations. Uh, the first thing to know about Laplace transforms is just the definition. It's taking some function f of t and it's integrating it multiplied by the special function e to the negative st where s is a complex variable. Now we've already been using s as a complex variable to stand for things like taking a, a derivative or also when we use the uh, frequency response we also use s equals j omega. This is a similar kind of S, and in fact, once you're working with Laplace transform, all of the things we've been using S for still apply. So in a way, you already know half of the things that you need in order to use Laplace transforms. What these transforms let you do is they give you a different view of a function. Instead of looking at a function in terms of time, you're viewing it in terms of this complex variable S, which has units in frequency instead of time. This is a very abstract concept, but it turns out to be practically useful. Let's do some examples, starting with the function we've used the most, which is the unit step function, which is also particularly easy to take the transform of. The Laplace transform we denote with the script L, and in curly brackets we put the function we're taking the transform of, and then the, re the result of that we often denote with a capital letter and then the letter S meaning we've transformed from a function of time into a function of complex variable s. And then the definition is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t multiplied by e to the negative st, which in this case is particularly easy because uh, the unit step is just equal to 1 for the entire domain of this integral. So we just need to integrate from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st dt. I forgot a dt here. Uh, where the zero minus means time just before t equals zero. So what that's intended to mean is that when we compute our integral, if anything interesting happens at time zero, that's actually got to be included in the integral because we're starting just before time zero. So this integral is actually pretty easy. That's just going to be one over s, negative one over s e to the negative st evaluated from t equals 0 to infinity. Now when you plug in time infinity that's just going to give you uh, a uh, 0 here. So this is going to be 0 minus negative 1 over s times e to the negative s times 0. In other words this is just going to give us 1 over s. So the Laplace transform of the unit step function is 1 over s. There's one other Laplace transform that's fairly easy to compute and that's the impulse function delta of t where the Laplace transform of our delta of t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of delta of t e to the negative st dt. Now if you recall the sifting property which we used and introduced way back in homework one, you actually know how to compute this integral. This is just going to be equal to e to the negative st evaluated at time zero. Uh, if you plug in time zero, of course, that's going to give us one. So the Laplace transform of the uh, unit impulse is just going to be equal to one. Now, unfortunately, this is pretty much the end of Laplace transforms that are easy to compute. An example is if we com wanted to compute the Laplace transform of the unit ramp function, then the Laplace transform of t is just going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the negative st dt. Now, this isn't terribly hard to uh, evaluate. Uh, but it's going to take a little bit of time and therefore we're going to assign it to you as an exercise in your homework. And the technique that you're going to need is integration 
by parts. We're not going to do this because you're actually going to work it out yourselves, but the answer I can already tell you is that f of s is equal to 1 over s squared. Pretty much any other Laplace transform is actually quite laborious to compute. And so we've already done most of the uh, conceivable functions that could be encountered, and these are available in tables. And in fact, there's a Laplace tr transform table in the uh, inside cover of your textbook. In fact, here's just such a table right here. So this shows the impulse step and ramp. And then uh, perhaps the ones that are uh, used quite often are these, especially the exponential and the uh, sine and cosine, where uh, the transforms are shown here. And then there's also the decaying sinusoid, which if you recall is just meaning something where you have a decaying exponential envelope and some sort of a sinusoid that's varying uh, within that envelope. And here are the transforms for those. Another property of Laplace transforms is that they make it possible to solve for the output for an arbitrary input, uh, u of t. So let's say, suppose we had a transfer function or a differential equation, and we applied some uh, input other than a unit impulse or a ramp or a step. In other words, something that we don't usually encounter. Th one way to evaluate the response x of t for that arbitrary input is what we call the convolution integral. It's an integral where you multiply u by h, where we have a dummy variable tau that's actually shifted uh, relative to the normal time. This is a very difficult to integral to evaluate, and we generally want to avoid doing that if at all possible. And the nice thing about the Laplace transform is that the equivalent of this uh, convolution is actually a much simpler operation, which is just multiplication. So you just have to take your transfer function, h of s, and multiply it by the transform of the input in order to evaluate the uh, transform. And then what the way you find the time response is then you have your x of s and that has to be converted backwards into an x of t by taking the inverse Laplace transform where we're using the script L again but the minus one means we're taking the inverse transform. Now again we tend to use tables quite a, quite a bit for this and that's because the inverse Laplace transform is actually not very easy to evaluate. We're going to defer doing an example of the inverse Laplace transform until later, but let's just summarize some key points for now. One is that Laplace transforms are very useful for control systems, especially including feedback. The second is we gave the definition of the transform where we're converting a function of time into a function of this complex variable s, usually using the capital letter notation for that. And we also said that we use the script L and curly braces to denote when we're taking a Laplace transform. The transform itself is an integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the negative s t. We also went over a few key and easy transforms for the unit impulse step and ramp, which are the functions that we encounter most often anyway. And then we said that the response to an arbitrary input u of t can be computed by just multiplying the transfer function of the uh, system by the transform of the input to, uh, to yield the transform of the output. And then you just take the inverse Laplace transform of that in order to find y of t.